So there are two main errors that you're going to find when you're using the request module in Python. Generally, that's going to be the connection error, which means the website doesn't exist, and the status code error or the HTTP error, which means that you've got a 404 or a bad status code back. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you should properly handle those errors. You're going to log them, and you're not going to just push through them and ignore them. So on the screen, I have import requests, and we have a URL here, and there's nothing at this actual endpoint here. So if I go ahead and print out r.statuscode, we're going to get 404 back in our terminal down here. Now, our code is actually carried on through this because we're not doing anything with this. So if you were trying to actually rely, if the rest of your code relied on information that you thought you were going to get from this, you're going to get errors further down and you're not going to know why. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you handle these errors at the actual time that they happen. So what we can do is we can actually put in r.raise for status here, which is going to raise an error if it finds the status code that is not a good one, a 404, etc., etc., and it's going to throw an error for us. And if I run that, you'll see that we get this error down here. So the error we've got is request.exceptions.http error 404. Now this has just raised it all for us and it's actually stopped our code. So when you raise an error, you raise that up and it basically stops your program where it is. But we might not want to do that, we might want to handle that error, in which case we need to put in a try and accept block and do something when we find this error coming up. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to put in try. We're going to indent this. We're going to leave our raise for status because that's actually bringing our error, our error. And we're going to put in accept. Now we want this error to be caught. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy that and we're going to do requests.exceptions.http error because that's the one that's being thrown by this for the bad status. And we're going to do as ERR. Now we're inside this accept block, we're actually going to write some code to handle this exception, handle this error. So we're going to do something with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a print statement and we're going to say bad status code, put a space in that, and we're going to do r dot status code. There we go. And I'm going to change this one to, we'll just see that the code carries on. So we'll just say uh, program carries on down here. So we can see that this block of code gets executed anyway. So let's run this and we'll see that we get our bad status code 404, which is what we've put in here. So we've actually handled this error and we've done something with it at the time. Now, if you wanted to actually stop your program here, you can just raise this error manually. So you just do raise ERR. So this is the error here that we're raising. And this is going to cause our program to stop. And we can see that we get the same requests HTTP error down here. So you can actually log all of this as well. I'll show you logging in just a minute. But now we're going to go ahead and handle the connection error, which means that it didn't find anything at this actual URL. So I'm going to remove the r.status code. And I'm just going to show you that if we try to handle a status code error versus a connection error, we'll see what happens. And you see we get this error down here. Uh, even though we're raising the other error, this one came up, uh, request.exceptions connection error. So if I remove the raise, we might think that it would carry on, but it's not going to catch this specific connection error because we are catching HTTP error. So that's important. Now there's two things you can do here. You can manually handle the connection error, although requests exceptions does have a catch all kind of error class in it that you can use, which is called requests exceptions as error. So now when I run this, it's actually going to catch all of the general uh, errors and exceptions that you might find, including the connection error in here, and it's going to catch it and we can then do something with it. So I'm going to comment out the raise for status for the moment because we're not doing that. And we're going to leave it like this. We'll run it again, and you'll see we still get our bad status code. That's because of the code we've put in here. So instead of that, I'm going to put in a more general print statement, and I'm going to say uh, request exception found. And we're going to do something with that in just a minute. So let's run this again. Request exception found. So we're still finding that this doesn't exist, uh, we're getting a connection error. So if we were to raise this error, we're going to find our code stop. And with this error that we've got down here, which is what we wanted to find, but we're not going to raise it because we're actually going to log it. Now I've done a video on basic logging before, but generally what you want to do is just import it at the top and you need to configure it. I've got this over here, which I'm just going to paste in 
there and we'll make this all on one part of the screen so we can see there we go so all this is doing is configuring our logging our example.log file we're formatting it so we get the timestamp as well as the message and we are only logging on a warning level uh, you may or may not want this <clears throat> I just find this is going to be easier to show you what happens so what we're going to do is we're going to leave our print statement in here so we can visually see something happening and we're also going to do logging dot warning warning warn is deprecated our error so we're going to continue to put to let our code carry on now that we've captured this error this connection error that we're going to find so I'm going to run this we'll see our program stops because oh, I've spelt warning wrong let's put that in properly and we'll see that it carries on we found our exception so if I open the log file we can see over here that we have our date the HTTPS connection pool max retries caused by new connection error HTTP connection error failed uh, failed to establish a new connection so this is the actual error that we were getting before a connection error um, and we've actually now caught that error and logged it in our log file so we can see what's actually going on with our program when it's running and doing all of its things at the same time so just remember do a try and accept and make sure you catch the, the exceptions so this is the general exception class that you can use uh, and make sure you do something with it so now you know how to catch and handle your exceptions you're going to want to watch this video to show you how to log them all properly